Great. Hi, Leticia. Hello, Nate. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you? Good. I'm good. Um, okay, so I saw you walking in. Mm -hmm. It's like most of the time when you ask someone how they're doing, it's, you expect like a generic response back, you know? Yeah. But a lot of people say they're great, but then you walked in with like huge smiles on your face <laughs> with a guitar on your back. You're going to yeah. play for us maybe later on, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. Do you feel like your guitar is an extension of you by yes. now? Do you carry it always? Yes, I am always with it. Really? Always with it. Always Even with if it. I play the same things over and over and over again, I'm always with it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. You play it every time you sleep? Um, I sometimes? practice with it. I perform. Mm -hmm. I just sit with it also sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, I'm learning now music theory as well. Yeah. But so, yeah, I have to be with it a lot. Yeah. You know? Okay. Yeah, and I travel with it. Never leave it behind. Really? Even if we have to like stuff it in there, it's going it with me. It has to go in there. It has to go with <laughs> oh, me. That's yes. nice. Hey, so my first question for you. Um, it's like my experience with creative people, especially those in abstract fields like music, arts, painting. It's like the way they visualize the world is, uh, I mean, the way they imagine the world is visually, you know, through, through um, pictures and stuff. So it's like if we were to have fun with your imagination for a bit mm -hmm. like and let's imagine that uh music is like an an array of different ice cream flavors yeah okay. what flavor would you say best describes the music that you drawn to you could mix uh, flavors if you want to i think coffee mixed with um amarula <laughs> flavor <laughs> okay um okay and then i'd say this is ice cream, right? Ice cream. Yeah. Yeah. Coffee. Okay. Why coffee? Because it's rich and it's strong. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah. What music genres would you say interest you most? Um, I think jazz and R&B, mm -hmm. neo soul, um, and I'm also into um, house music, mm -hmm. um, some deep house. Um, and yeah, I listen to, to a lot of music, pop. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I stick to R&B, jazz, and hip hop okay. as well. What would the coffee and Amarula be? <laughs> <laughs> what would those be? Would that be jazz? And, and I think the... Soul? Yeah. Really? Uh-huh. Okay, okay, that's nice. Um, when was the first time you picked up a guitar? When I picked up a guitar was when I was 11 years old. Mm -hmm. um, I always played with my dad's guitar because they stored it in my room. Mm -hmm. Always like just made random sounds with it. And then one day I was 12 years old. Yes, I picked it up and I was like, you know, today, let me just see what's online. And then I went, how to play guitar? And then I just never, you know, I never gave put it, it like you know, put yeah. it down. Yeah. 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 Is it your dad a musician? Now? Um, he plays a little bit of guitar. Is it? Yeah. Is it? Do you play better than him now? <laughs> um, no, I can't say I play better than no? my dad. Really? No, my so dad's he, the goat. He's that good. Yeah, really? yeah. Okay. He's a bit of like out of practice. Okay. But like, yeah, I don't think he's better than. Him. Yeah. And why do these genres speak to you? Uh, more than the others is it like the music you grew up listening to as a kid definitely uh, as a, okay. yeah i listened to lira growing up in in the re and um you know i think my parents they really influenced a lot of my like even how i write now my music um the words that i sing and so on it they really they really influenced me a lot from when i was a kid because you know, I just always thought it was beautiful, mm. beautiful. I mean, Lira, for instance, like her music, um, I love her, her music so much. Um, and then, yeah, they also listen to Deep House and stuff. So I always thought these old school songs were like cringy and stuff like that. But now I tend to listen to them more. Mm -hmm. You know, they're more on my playlist now because I can like have fun with them and um, also the music itself. You know, the people and where it comes from, I think I resonate with that a lot, you know, and what they stand for and so on. Most of your songs that you play, like, because it's obviously the guitar, you know, you would gravitate towards uh, jazz, mm -hmm. soul, and stuff like that. 
do you find yourself rewriting a lot of songs to fit that yeah. the genre? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I kind of jazzify everything that I do. So even if I have to sing Jesse J, I will sometimes, you know, put soul into it and find other chords that, you know, are deeper and so on. Um, the cover songs that I sing. Um, my own songs, I keep on changing them every day. I mean, I didn't release yet, so I have the freedom to do so. Okay. Uh, I can just change them however I want, change words sometimes. Um, sometimes I just don't feel like it anymore, you know, um, I, or I don't like it anymore, and then I just change it how I want to. Yeah. Yeah, so I keep on changing it as I change through every season that I go through. Yeah. yeah. So you write songs. Um, what themes do you keep coming back to, like what do you usually sing about? Self help and um, word like words of encouragement, like affirmations, um, and yeah, that that is that is it, and some random stuff as well. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Does it? Do you, you said when you write, you sat down to write, or does it just uh, sort of come out of the situation that you're in? Like it depends. Some songs, it's first the melody, and then the words come as like. I feel it more and I feel it more. Um, most of my songs, my brother is in love, my smaller brother he would sit with me and then I would, you know, play and play and play and then it would actually make sense and then I put words on it and then it just grows like that. Um, uh. So I gravitate towards um, self help and saying stuff like my one song for you. I'll play it. Okay, sure, <laughs> nice. <laughs> It's yeah. about doing things for yourself mm -hmm. um, and also, yeah, it's about every day, you know, waking up, liking, mm -hmm. brushing your teeth and the mundane things in life. So I think I say those things in my, mm -hmm. my songs. Yeah. Nice. Um, how was your experience? Okay, because this is my, I think with, you picture yourself as a creative person, right? And it's like most of the time as a creative, it's like you're the brand, you're the product of everything you do, basically. If you were to do something else, like let's say a teacher, a lawyer or a doctor, basically professionally, usually if you get too big, you can sort of like create something of your own, hire people that would sort of do those things for you. And then you could like become invisible to the whole thing. But if you like a singer or writer, it's like, even if you're 80 years old, people just want to see you, you know, you can't give it to someone else, you know, it's like they just want to see you. But that journey usually takes a lot of uh, personal space. It's like you hone your craft in like um, isolation most of the time. But in order to sort of um, serve people, you know, you need to come in front of people. But now I think it might be a bit difficult for people to like not advertise themselves, but just um, expose themselves more. And yeah. share who they share. are. Yeah. How was that journey for you? Um, gravitating from your personal space uh -huh. to being comfortable like in front of people. And, yeah. yeah. Um, at the moment, like I'm very confident when I step on stage and when I have gigs and so on. Um, but when it comes to social media and so on in my brand i'm not i haven't established myself in that sense yet so i i think i might have social anxiety i mean because i just do not like posting and every time i have a photo shoot it's like it's like i would rather make the music instead of that so okay. this is one of the the challenges that i'm facing right now um and also like the people to work with so that i can you know i'm not a photographer so we want to work with a photographer that I resonate with to like bring about these beautiful artwork and stuff. Um, but when I sing and, I, and I'm on stage, I share who I am in that moment, mm -hmm. you know. Um, that's just a glimpse of Letitia that you'll find. And yeah. um, online, she's not there yet. And I'm working on that. Um, but when I step on stage, I'm like, I am Letitia. Person, really? Yes, okay. I don't, and I go on there and I sing though every word mm -hmm. how it's supposed to be singing. Yeah. Have you considered like, because that version of the person that you are on stage, mm -hmm. have you considered showing that more like on social media, basically? Mm -hmm. I think because it's it's easier for you to do that, you know, than to. I'm not sure, okay, because I'm not sure about the um, exposure thing. 
Yeah, so that's why I thought to ask, like, if someone was um, good at what they do and they want people to get to know them mm -hmm. because that's the whole yeah. point, right? Yes. Yeah. What are the first steps? What do you think um, are the things they should consider doing? Like social media? Social media. Um, finding a team. Finding a team. Like your bandmates, your manager, your okay. everything, your lawyer, everything. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Your... Um, your support system, the people you can always go to to sell tickets mm -hmm. to. <laughs> okay. Where do you um, get those people? Family. Uh, yeah, um, sure. And every time I gig, I always meet so many people, you know, and I always, they always want to come again. <laughs> so that, yeah. Um, and then the other thing to consider is um, the music itself and the time that you spend on it and mm -hmm. the type of music that you listen. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah i i sit with something and then i'm like oh, i scratch like with it for like like months and months um and then at the end of the day then i have a song but when it comes to gigging and stuff i have to be very consistent with gigging and um learning new songs and so on um and yeah and i think for me now is getting into the the studio mm. yeah and nice. actually creating the music because now my music is in, in draft form. Yeah. And now it needs to be polished up and... And again, okay. Yeah. You've never You've never shown anyone your music? I've performed it. Oh, you have? I've performed it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I've performed it. I, per I perform my music when I gig. Sometimes I sing a song or two. But I've had two huge shows at FNCC where I sang majority of my, my songs really? and my upcoming show on the 3rd of December at Jazz on the Lawn mm -hmm. um, I'm also going to sing my songs most of your songs? yeah more of my songs nice yeah and nice awesome nice so okay. you have to be there <laughs> to sure. be able for to sure. listen for sure. to my music for yeah. sure nice um, what was the most surprising experience for you throughout all this musical journey what was something that you were like, oh, this is cool, you know, that... That's actually yeah. possible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm learning that every day. Yeah. But it's actually possible to... To... Be fully, like, like fully in the, the music industry and, mm -hmm. and also live a happy life. Yeah. Uh, and that's what I'm learning and I'm debunking all of the stereotypes and the myths that yeah. I constantly still hear every day in my ear yeah you know I, I think I'm learning that every day that it's possible okay. and also that you're not as smart as you think really yeah what, is, what does that mean? like I need to humble down <laughs> and I need to give myself like a team uh, okay because uh, I'm independent now I do everything by myself mm. um, yeah so I'm I'm looking Mm. And I'm hoping that my energy is open enough for those people to come, yeah. to come to me. Okay. Yeah, no, working with people is actually a... I mean, it's, it helps for you to start off yourself. But at some point, it's like you can't do much on your own, you know, mm -hmm. so you need, you need different people. Yeah. Professionally, is this what you want to do forever? Or do you have... Do you kind of divide your passion with uh, work, let's say? It's interesting this whole year being on yeah. my being done with school now. Um, I gave myself permission to to feel it out, you mm -hmm. know. Um, and right now, I think music is the only thing that I really want to do. Um, I have so many other passions as well and skills that I want to learn for music. So whatever I do, it must be aligned to doing this forever because. Yeah, singing, I can't go a day without singing. Even if I'm sick and my voice is not there, I still need to sing really? and play guitar. And I think what I have to offer in my music is is valuable enough and is special enough to, I think, make it, especially since there's not a lot of people that look like me in this industry and that is trying to make the music that I'm making. Um, and so, yeah, I really need to yeah. every day wake up and be like, ah, oh, it's a privilege to wake up and... Yeah. And know that my God-given gift can can make me some money as well, uh -huh. you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's that's what I want to do, and I want to be completely in the creative field. Um, I'm painting as well. Um, I'm into beauty as well. So I mean, I'm young. Who knows? Yeah. You know. Yeah. But for the time being, all I want to do is sing and play guitar. Nice. That's it. 
Sing nice. and play guitar. Sing and play guitar. Nice. Sing and play guitar. Nice. Okay. Yeah. This is sort of like a personal question for me. It's like, how do you learn how to sing? Because I've been playing as well mm -hmm. for quite some time, maybe writing sometimes, but the voice thing doesn't just work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah. how do you? How did you get to practicing how to sing? Did you have to go to school, or is it just singing, singing, singing? I watched a lot of like idols growing mm. up. And like my dad got me this karaoke machine for uh -huh. high school musical when I was okay. really small, like four years old. Uh -huh. Did he, I remember me singing already? Um, I really don't know. I um, just, you said you started at three. Yeah, I, that sing. explains everything. Yeah. yeah um, so I sang before I played guitar. Okay. But then when I played guitar, I realized, oh, I can actually sing. Mm -hmm. And then I took guitar more seriously. Okay. Like that. No, so there's no hope for me. Basically. No, there is, there is. There are a lot of things yeah. that you can do. Okay. I mean, everyone can always have a choir voice, you know? Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's just about training it. A training lot. it. Okay. Training it correctly. Yeah. And breathing, learning how to breathe correctly when you sing, and vocal warm ups. Yeah. And singing songs that, you know, fits with your register and all of that. You know? Okay. With your voice. Yeah, with your voice. What songs fit with my voice? I don't know. Um, can you can you sing something quickly? No. No. <laughs> no. Maybe some no. John Legend. Really? Yeah. Okay. Okay. John Legend makes sense. It does make sense. It's not too fast. Um, yeah, it's not too fast. Oh, you can try rap. You know, you can sound a little Uzi, no? No. 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 Okay. <laughs> okay. So, so yeah. Um, I had questions that aren't too serious, you know, like random questions, sort of like fun questions, I guess. It's like, uh, if you had a fictional character that you could have dinner with, who would it be? Oh. Fake character, cartoon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would say Moana. Okay. Yes. Why? She just loves the ocean and I love the ocean. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Just to sit with her and talk about the ocean. Yeah, and talk yeah. about where she comes from, the stories that she heard. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If you were to be in a deserted island and you could only take three things. Three things. Yeah. I know what the first one is. My guitar. <laughs> yeah. Dev. <laughs> yeah. Um, sunscreen. Okay. Yes. Yeah, the desert, right. Uh -huh. Okay. And then... And then I think the other thing would be. I guess there's food in the desert and stuff, so you don't. Know, Is there food yeah, and water yeah. there? <laughs> <laughs> Should be food and water, so. Okay, then I'd say my journal. Your journal. Yes. My journal. Your journal and a pen. Journal and a pen and my a, sunscreen and my guitar. And guitar. Those are the three yeah. things that I would. Nice, nice. Okay, nice. Um, I think I'm going to let you play, okay. but before I do, is there a question you want to ask me? And afterwards, I'm going to let you like give advice to your previous self. Um, yeah, I mean, if, let's say, last question. If, if, you were, if you had a time machine and you could go to the past or the future, which one would you choose? I'd go... I'd go to the the past. Yeah. Okay. So, what would you tell your previous self with the knowledge you know right now? It's not that deep, mm. and it's all in your head. Mm -hmm. Everything. Mm -hmm. Okay. Literally, it's really? all in your head. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'll tell her that. So she shouldn't care much, basically. She should just do it. Do it. Yeah. And it's yeah. Get out of there. You know? Is it? Okay, that's it. And get in here. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Follow your heart, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice. Okay. A question for you would be, mm -hmm. um, what do you, what do you want to achieve with this podcast? Mm. Okay. So for me, it's like, I think most of the time learning stuff learning new things mm -hmm. makes a lot of sense if you learn it from people that actually 
did the stuff. Yeah, so a lot of times there's been people that um, that you would get advice from usually on uh, on the internet and YouTube and stuff like that. But it's a bit hard to relate to those people, you know. And it's a bit like the journey of those people is not uh, necessarily that you know you can't really match it with the journey that you have. But if you could learn from your peers, people around you, people that you can easily relate to and sort of like trace how they did certain things maybe you could find someone that does or achieve something that you would like to achieve and it makes more sense listening directly from them basically i think like books and um, all sorts of information it's usually it's people that write them you know and if you can have a chance to get to speak with those people directly i think you would have a lot of like first-hand um, fresh knowledge <laughs> I mean this is share face so it's about yeah, learning share, right exactly yeah. yeah that's beautiful yeah um another question may I sure um yeah. what advice would you give me mm. in hmm. this in this industry what advice would I give you uh okay I I think the advice I would give you, okay, I can't really say because I'm not necessarily in that mm -hmm. industry, but um, most of the time it's like people relate to the person themselves. Most of the people that we admire, it's because we admire the craft they do, you know. It's mm -hmm. like if you see the best, uh, I don't know, soccer player or the best, um, whatever person you know you don't necessarily know them you know but you know this craft that that they do yeah but um so i think showing more of yourself you know showing more of so myself. showing more of yourself i know that you let's say you you have sessions where you kind of show more of yourself but that's just for the time being and there's no recording of that i think so the people that they enjoy, but that moment just dies there, mm -hmm. you see? So, so I think if you were to, maybe every time you go on a gig or something, maybe you take a recording of it and then you post it to people. So it kind of lives forever, you know, mm -hmm. those moments live forever. And it's easier for people to get closer and closer to you, you know, by maybe seeing your journey. You, you could be like 20 years down the line and you look back and you'll be like oh this is how i was singing and you kind of see how you've grown it's documented exactly yeah and you documented but you shade at the same time so people kind of grow with you and you know they become more drawn to you personally yeah i think i'd, I'd give share. you that advice <laughs> share right <laughs> exactly. yes exactly share more of yourself yes yeah thank yeah. you okay yeah, yeah. so yeah uh-huh. <laughs> okay. I've been smiling, also kind of crying, but I've been healing, praying while kneeling. I've made a recipe for my social anxiety. A little bit of love, a little bit of care, a little bit of honesty, just put it everywhere for you. Do it for you, for you. Oh, oh, for 